if you enjoyed this content make sure you like share the video don't forget to subscribe because it actually helps us to grow as a channel so we can continue to make these videos for you okay so today we're going to be looking at something i've been wanting to take a look at for quite a while now um which is i'm pretty sure what a lot of you guys would um, be interested in as well which is the nasdaq 100 okay um i don't typically talk a lot about the nasdaq 100 right simply because i don't like guys going right off the bat and sort of like trading the nasdaq because it's not that it's more difficult or more complex or anything of the sort it's just that it okay all right um yeah we'll, we'll get to that don't worry about it okay but right, i got you nicholas there so as i was saying with the with the nasdaq it's um it's a very volatile instrument to trade right so if you have a hundred dollars in your trading account and you're not going to be really trading as frequently as you would if you have a trading let's say on a thousand dollar account or two thousand dollar account right now there's a lot of confusion about the pip count when it comes to the nasdaq basically or the point count a lot of guys just take a trade and they just drag they take profit to i can say a point where they feel that they're comfortable with the profit Right, low, so let's say a hundred dollars, right? They just drag it to a hundred dollars and they're not sure how to actually calculate the exact pip or point value for a trade in the NASDAQ, right? So that's a major problem because obviously you can't really um, predefine your risk before you enter into a position, right? Now, if you can predefine your risk beforehand, right? So if you can say, okay this is the trade that i'm basically going to take and this is how much risk i'm putting on the trade this is the maximum amount i am willing to risk on that particular trade then you saw you are trading at least in that essence as a professional okay so we're going to tackle that we're going to tackle a few other questions that you guys have regarding the nasdaq um but for today i want to focus on the previous day's high and the previous day's low and the previous week's high and the previous week's low now the reason being okay if you if you if you look at a lot of markets right you're probably going to have those previous days high and previous days low and the market will probably reject around those areas sometimes it breaks clean through that area sometimes it just touches that area and just just moves in the opposite direction so the first step would be to basically understand what those triggers are, right? It's nice to look at a chart and be able to interpret the chart just based off the candlestick pattern. But I would believe that it's critically more important to be able to take sort of like what's going on in the background, right? And then sort of like related to what's going on with the candlesticks themselves. So what I'd like for us to do, right? Um, there's an indicator i'll drop it in the telegram channel you guys can download it install it on your mt4 platform it's basically going to help to draw a blue line right through the previous days high and previous days low um, i'm not quite certain if i have it on this mt4 platform but i'll just do the previous days high previous days low stuff manually so we don't need to worry about that but the indicator I'll drop on in the Telegram channel, and it's basically going to show you a dotted blue line right across where the previous day's high is and the previous day's low. Right now, these points, right, like I said, we need to first start with understanding. Right, so if you can understand why the market behaves the way that it does at at um, certain points, then it's much easier for you to actually follow a strategy based off of that because now you understand why the market does that and it sort of like gives you an added bit of confidence about the trade working out okay 
Thanks, Google Guy. So let's just take a look at today is Thursday, right? Okay, even lost track of what day it is. Today is Thursday, and this is Wednesday's low, right? And this is Wednesday's high. Okay, boom. All right. Now, previous days highs and previous days low have proven to be areas of sort of like high um, liquidity, right? So there's, a, there's usually a lot of liquidity around those areas because there are a lot of strategies and methods to actually trade a breakout of the previous day's high and the previous day's low. Right? So that's why we see markets sometimes slightly touch the previous day's high and then just pull back to the downside. And sometimes it goes to the previous day's low and touches that and then goes back up. So as I'm pretty certain I've mentioned this before, the market basically ranges most times, right? So about 70 to the, close to 80% of the time, right? The market is in a sideways range and the market only has a sort of like a unidirectional swing and it's only trending about, I can say 30 to 20 something percent of the time, right? Let's just say 25 to 30% of the time. Um, it's just that it's been a while since I revised that data. But let's just go with 80-20. Okay, so 80% of the time, the market is ranging and 20% of the time, the market is trending in one direction. Now, if you look at the markets closely, right, you will actually see that they do tend to move sideways very frequently, right? So out of a 10-day period, you're only going to see two days of rise and then about eight days of the market going down and then it goes up again. But when you're looking at it on a very small time frame, it looks like the market is actually trending. You know, it looks like the market is going in one direction. But if you zoom out a bit and you actually look at where this high is, right? You can see that there was a high, the market pulled down and then pushed up again, then down, pushed up again down and then pushed up and then actually came back into this range, right? So all of this is basically still ranging, right? When we're looking at it close up, it may look like the market is trending to the upside, but when you look at the swing lows, right? When the swing lows on an uptrend are being broken, that's no longer an uptrend, right? This would be an uptrend. Swing lows are not being broken. They are being respected, okay? but you could see a possible return back down to this area, which would make this also a bit of a range. Okay, now that's critical and very important to understand because now, once we understand that the markets don't really trend a lot, right? When they do, they'll take off, right? Whether it's to the upside or the downside, but when they do trend, they will take off. But most of the time, since they're ranging sideways, we're going to get a lot of false breakouts, right? So that's basically to entice the guys who are trading a breakout method that actually activates, let's say, their trade above the previous day's high, right? So that trade is activated as soon as, because I know a lot of people who believe that they can trade in that way. And I'm pretty certain you can trade in that way, right? It's just that you need to have a really good risk reward ratio because most of the time you're gonna be wrong, right? You could be wrong 60% of the time. So the 40% of the time that you're right, you need to be right, I don't know, three, four or five times. Um, your profit needs to be five times or six times your, your, your risk on average, you know? That makes a really good then um, performance over time. But most of the time, majority of the time, it's very difficult to have a high win ratio if you're purely trading a, a, an approach that uses a breakout method for the reason that I mentioned. Markets will range majority of the time, right? Now, it, is, it has been said that the reason that the markets trade trend um, less than they usually or less than 
the 70s and 80s is because there's more participants, right? And there's more algorithmic trading, right? So that means trading robots, which basically look for a pip or two pips or three pips. So that makes the markets very choppy. And obviously strategies tend to clash a lot. All right. So a trend um, following approach, um, its effectiveness has diminished. I'm not saying you can't make money. You can definitely make money with um, a trend following approach. You can make a lot of money using that. But like I said, its effectiveness has diminished over time, right? I think one of the greatest trend traders of all time, well, to me, the greatest, um, actually lost money in the last year of trading. Right? I mean, the guy made like 800 million. Uh, but his last year of trading, actually, he lost money and um, he just took a break and didn't um, trade again. And simply because the way he was trading wasn't as effective as it had been in the past. So his performance diminished. So with the ranging market, right, with the ranging market, it's very, it's, you can easily get caught up in a false breakout. Now, with that sort of knowledge, right, understanding that there's liquidity around the, those areas, right? So there's a lot of um, uh, market participants, could be smart money, right? Looking to sell around this, right? So because if there's someone buying up here, there needs to be a seller, right? So and if there's someone selling over here, there needs to be a buy, okay? So the strong hand, which is a, which is a smart money, will usually buy and sell at the market turning points, right? A lot of the times you're gonna have um, the big boys shorting, let's say, right at where the previous day's high is, because that's where a lot of retail as well as institutional traders will be buying at. Okay. Now, when I say institutional trader, I'm saying let's say bank trader, um, guys trading for hedge funds, um, mutual funds. Now, for them, it's not too important that they get killer entries, right? or even if they they get 70% of their trades, right? All right, okay. So they can have a 70% losing ratio, okay? And only win 30% 30% of their trades and they don't mind. It's just that they have these large risk reward ratios. Um, they risk $1,000 to make $12,000. They risk $100 to make um, 1,200 US dollars, right? So they don't mind being wrong most of the time. So that's why we see a lot of this sort of price action because this is where those institutions will get in, right? They'll buy, boom, and the market will push up, right? Exciting a lot of traders, retail traders as well who trade a breakout sort of method. And immediately once there's more than enough volume there, for smart money to execute their trades, right? The big boys, um, they'll basically do it around this area, boom, right? And that pulls the market to the downside. Um, I even sent an audio book that I was listening to a while back in the Telegram channel where an actual individual trader was capable of moving the market. But that was a while back. I think that was back in the 80s and they were trading on, on the trading floor, I think in Chicago. So, but he would say, I mean, the main reason why I buy or sell near the previous days, high, previous days low, I just push price right through where the previous days high is, okay? So I buy up over here. I know that's gonna get people excited, right? So everyone is looking for that breakout. Now, mind you, the breakout does work a lot of the time, right? If you took a breakout here, boom, previous days high, you made some money. If you took a breakout over here, also, you made some money. Okay. Also over here, if you took the previous days breakout, you also made some money, but it doesn't mean that you're gonna make money all the time. In a trending market, yes, you will be making money, but in a sideways or ranging market, it's gonna be very difficult for you to be able to make money. Now it's difficult to say, when the market is ranging and when the market is trending, if you don't have rules for a trending 
or a ranging market okay because you can trade a trend breakout a breakout strategy when the market is trending and then flip to a reversal strategy when the market starts to range. So you need to formulate some basic rules about what a range ranging market is and what a trending market is. Okay. So when you plot the indicator onto the onto your chart, you'll be able to see these previous days highs and previous days lows. Now it's it's much easier on the on currencies, right? You have a lot of ranges when it comes to currencies. All right. On the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ, when it's it's influenced by very different things than what a Japanese yen will be influenced by. Right? But in essence, the same principle would apply. Right? There'll be buyers who are, I can say, have pending orders or who are waiting to execute at, uh, at market right above I can say this level is 10661, which is, um, I think this is Tuesday's low. No, this is Monday's low rather. Okay, so on Tuesday, um, they look at where the market is, right? And the market is somewhere around there and they place a buy stop, boom, right about there. And they're like, okay, if the market goes up, right? I want the market to activate my buy stop. Let's say a few pips above the previous day's high and yeah i want it to rise to heaven okay and of course the market will push to the upside activate those buy stops and pull back right now that doesn't happen all the time but it does happen very often especially in ranging markets and you can see the market pulls away from the swing low right so and formed the low of the day and it's not like moved away now if you imagine if you looking at this right and this hasn't happened and you're like okay i may have been wrong on the upside but let me place my sell stop at 1050 okay because i believe if the market breaks yesterday's low then it should continue on the push to the downside right so you might use a moving average or something as your take profit but you're like okay the market should move to the downside So that doesn't happen basically. Okay, all the market does, it pushes to the downside yes, and will trigger the sales, right? So the sales from the weak hands will be triggered and then the strong hands will then obviously take the other side of that trade and they will be buyers. And then the market will push to the upside, right? I hope that makes sense. So in essence, what we want to be doing most of the time, especially when it comes to ranging sideways markets, we'll be looking at shorting around the previous day's high or the previous day's low, previous month high or the previous, previous year's lows, because those are also areas where a lot of um, the weaker hands will be trading around, right? And the smart money will be looking for the weak hands to buy at the previous week's high, expecting the market to shoot up, right, from, there, from that point onward. But it could touch and then pull back to the downside, right? Now, there's a few nuances and a lot of stuff that we will still need to discuss, like, okay, what, and what in which direction rather, would I be trading, right? Because you don't want to go against what seems to be an uptrend, right? For example, I wouldn't have taken this one, right? I would have probably taken this one, okay? Because it's in line with the short-term, mid-term trend, okay? It's just much safer because a lot of the times you get more bang for the buck, All right? You don't want to be shorting retracements or buying retracements you want at least to be in line with where the major trend or even the mid and short term trend are actually going. Okay. All right, guys. Um, any questions?
Any questions, guys? Anything you need me to go over? Obviously, you have to depend on what the strategy that you actually would have to go with. Um, because in the ebook, strategy one, I basically have intervals there. Right? So, what a buy would look like, what a sell would look like. I think there's like five rules to that. And I think all the strategies in the ebook have like detailed strategies or detailed entries. Um, some would use a pending order and some would be market execution. So you'd wait for a hammer candle or you'd wait or you'd place your pending order around a big figure right? and just leave it and place your stop loss and you take profit and you just wait for the trade to basically um, reach that price level. But like I said, it's, it's, it's very different um, methods. Right? So I can just give you a heads up and say, when it comes to the pin bar, basically, if the market is in line, now obviously you can't just take this one part and say, right, I'm looking at the previous day's high and as soon as I get a pin bar on the previous day's high, I'm shorting. Like I said, there's a few other things that we're gonna be discussing um, that will lead us to an entry. But for now, I think just focus on more the pin bar, right? I'm not quite sure if you guys are familiar with the pin bar, but that's probably the only candlestick I care about, All right? So you're just looking at the candlestick pattern, we'll go over that, so no need to worry, but you're not looking just at the previous day's high or the previous day's low or previous month's high, previous month's low, and just making your trading decision off of that. Okay, there's a few other elements that we're gonna add. Okay, makes sense. Okay, 